Hello there YouTube people, this is Mizu for the win bringing you a new tutorial on how to play Bad Company 2. Once again, this time we're going to be exploring the land of Lan, or at least that's what makes it sound pretty. The truth is that you can play with anyone, anywhere, over the world, only if their IP is external and if they got their ports forwarded. So that means you have to do those things before you start setting up your server, now we got that out of the way. Let's begin with the tutorial. First off, you're going to need Maze BC2, so like all of our tutorials, we're going to use the official media fire approach, no scams, no shams here, and uh, the link that I'm using is actually from an official source, it's not mine, but for now we're just going to download, you can see I've already downloaded it several times um, during the making and before the making of this tutorial, just to experiment and to get my point across and straightened. So this is what you're going to get when you download this thing here. You just close it and now let's see you have a readme file which actually tells you how to install and how to set up the emulator and such don't worry i'm going to tell you all about that we're going to make it really easy uh, we're going to be using step one though uh, in the setup for connecting clients and servers because these two steps are so hard to get across and you probably won't even understand them now one thing i want to get across though this mace bc2 project or mod whatever you like to call it is incompatible with Nexus BC2, otherwise known as Roam. Emulator Nexus work will not be compatible with this, except that I made a tool for it. Me and Robin Hood, actually. Uh, one of the moderators of the forums, he helped me by giving me the code, and I modified it a bit, so let's get straight to it. As you can see, I actually made a separate folder. This one is a Mason BC2 and Nexus N1, so what we have here is pretty much your usual, you know, your server and all of that. However, we have here a program, and on this tutorial, a bit of extras that I'm going to add is that this is not going to be actually recorded on my computer. Uh, my internet's been acting up lately, so I cannot record this on my computer. If you're not, though, we have remote desktop connections. I'm actually going to blur the video for a second here, so you don't actually see the IP and all of that, so you cannot connect to the server. And now that we got out of the way, let's just pin it, unpin it, actually. And, uh, Hold on a second. I just want to remove this thing. Oh boy. Yeah, there we go. Alright. Now that we're in this here, I like it. Note, this is a kitty cat. Okay. Now that we get that other way, uh, you can see this is actually a friend's dedicated server. It's not actually mine, but he's on a vacation, so he left me in charge of it. <laughs> oh, big mistake, my dear friend. Uh, but as you can see, there's some servers running here. I also stopped a couple of servers here to not waste in bandwidth and pretty much uh, CPU power. So let's get to it. First of all, you can see over here, I have the exact same stuff that I have on the other computer. What a couple of extras actually. We have the Nexus Maze Switcher for the server. And there's also, um, there is also a client version. So this is also going to be in the description. So let's just actually get to it. Um, it might be a bit laggy, it's on my fault, excuse me. I have still left some servers running down here in case anybody wants to join on them, but I have just closed the Minecraft private servers, so... Again, this is not my server, I would like to mess with it to the minimal. Um, but yeah, let's get to it. Uh, there's gonna be a DOL folder here, what you need is these two files, but don't worry about it, one of them comes with the Nexus Maze switcher, so what we're gonna need is the bfbc 2 config any. Now, in case you want to host on your server, you need to drag this into this folder, and I already have one, so let's just replace it. And um, again, when you open it up, you're going to see it has some info on here. This info is really important, actually. Uh, make sure you connect to retail as to zero, but since you're going to be using these files that I provide from the video and such, pretty much you're going to have to, uh, you're going to have this pretty much already set up. The thing is, we don't want localhost. So this is the IP to the localhost. In other words, when you host this, only you'll be able to join to it. That's not what we want. We want everybody to be able to join. So what we're going to use is our external IP. Now, yet again, I'm going to blur the screen a bit so you don't see actually the IP and all that. Um, because this is a public dedicated server, which is actually rented. And uh, just save it as it is. Here we go. Now you can actually see the screen again. Uh, just to show you, this is pretty much how it is, and you can see it's last modified today, which is the 30th of July. So, what do we do now? We have the server set up, we need the Maze BC2. Again, extract all of this, but not directly in there, otherwise it's going to be a huge mess. 
I recommend you extract this as a folder in here. So just replace all of that since I already have it here, but for the sake of this tutorial, like on my past, I usually replace all the stuff to prove to you that it's actually working. Uh, you can have a new folder here, mazebc2. Well, again, you're going you're gonna to have a config file. We're going to open that up. And what you have over here is a lot of stuff. Don't be scared at first sight. This is not really anything that you should be afraid of. Uh, a couple of things that we have to point out. The emulator part over here has global server version. Just leave that as is. And then we have some things that you might want to change. Now, I personally recommend you leave this on um, like false. So that way you're going to see servers and going to be sure that you did all of the, all the things correctly. Excuse me, but a tongue twister here. Uh, what you don't actually want to keep is these parts over here. So what you want to do is all players are veterans. Well, let's do it. Let's unlock that M1 Garand for them. That's what they're coming on the server for. Vietnam for all, this means free Vietnam. Let there be freedom. Premium for all, I don't know what this is. Let's just leave it on true. And spec act for all, let's just leave it on true as well. Okay, that was all. One little problem, the emulator IP. This is a theater and plasma IP that's going to be using. Um, again, you could leave it to this if you want to join it just yourself. You're going to be hosting LAN parties, you can leave it at that. But again, I'm going to blur the screen. I'm going to just very quickly type in the IP as quickly as I can. Believe me, it's not really an easy IP to type. I'm going to close this up and pretty much save it. There we go. Again, you can see that it was just modified. Um, if you go back a bit in the video, you see that the file was in fact altered. The only reason I'm blurring the video a bit here is so you cannot see uh, the IP of the server and take control of it or anything. Uh, you would need the password and the username, but you know, safety's first. So when you open up the Maze BC2, that's going to be looking like a lot like this actually. It's pretty much going to be finished. It's nothing really hard to do. You just click it twice and it's open up. Now then, what do we have here? We have the server options. Again, we're going to have to change that if we want to join the server. So I have the name set up to Mizu's test. The port and remote admin port and such are all done. Uh, remote admin password is 123 just for the test. Bungbuster falls right through, whatever, that doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to set the yeah, 24 and pretty much yes. Um, if you want to know how to host on Vietnam, I suggest you watch my last video. It has an explanation in the description, but for now, we're going to continue on with this. So, what you would want to do actually, when you got the um, Nexus Maze switcher over here, we haven't actually shown that off yet. Let's just close this one. <clears throat> Again, apologies for the lag if you're experiencing it. Uh, it's not my fault, really. You have a client side and a server side. So this goes into your folder when you want to join the server. All of this goes into your folder. I'm going to show it on my computer after we're done with this. For now, we're going to use the server, extract all of this in here, and let's just save it. All right, let's do this. Save, replace everything. Again, yes, replace everything. Now, what we actually did is we pretty much set up the Nexus Maze switcher. Excuse me for the phone noise. Uh, like I said in the beginning of this video, this is a little collaboration between me and Robin Hood from the Emulator Nexus. Uh, he's one of the moderators, so pretty much thanks for the help, buddy old pal. Um, <laughs> but what we did was we made a little program that actually changes the D inputs depending on one or two, pretty much like with the Vietnam and normal server host switcher that I have in my last video. So what we have here is the D input for Mace, as you can see, 37 kilobytes. And the input for Nexus, which is a bit bigger, a megabyte even. Uh, like I said at the beginning of this video again, they're not compatible with each other. And this is what inspired me to do this. And this is why I actually asked Robin for help. And we actually did get it straight. So once we run the server, we're going to get an option to choose between Nexus or Maze. So let's see what the input is right now. It's one megabyte, which means it's Nexus. Let's just put it on two. Now if you follow the tutorial correctly throughout all of this, uh, the Nexus switcher should in fact run the Mace BC2 for you as well automatically uh, if you extract it in this folder. I recommend you do that. It saves a lot of time for both you and me to having to explain it again. Again, I'm going to blur this part over here so you don't actually get to see the IP. And uh, pretty much you can see the server is now running. Okay. So now we got the server running. Let's just go back to my desktop and we'll go on with the game. Alright, welcome back to my own desktop. Uh, over here things are going to be a lot smoother as you can see. Um, I'm actually not sure if you can experience all of those lag stirrings and such the video, but whatever. We're going to try to fix that as well. 
So what we need to do here? Well, we need to do the client side. Remember, we had a server and a client side. We're just gonna go over here. I already have an XMA switcher prepared. I'm gonna go with a client. Let's just close this. Now we're gonna go to my folder where the game is installed. Um, since I have the retail version, I have it over here. As you can see, same thing. We'll just extract this over here. Let's do it. Yes. Replace this as well. Yes. All right, as you can see, same thing, the inputs are the same, these folders with the inputs are the same. The only difference is this version is going to start the, excuse me, it's an older version, or more like the name is old. Uh, the, only, the only difference is that this is actually going to start the exe file via bc2 game instead of the server. So if you put them in the, if you put them basically as a mismatch, match, they're not going to start, they're probably going to give you an error, and then you're going to be like, what's going on, what's wrong with this? Which is why I told you, you need to make sure this goes into your installation folder, this goes into your server folder. Alright, now we got that out of the way, uh, we need the bfbc2 config again. And I'm going to open it. Uh, this, this IP is already made over here, so let's just close that up. And now I'm going to meet you in-game, where I'm going to explain how to connect to it. Alright, now welcome back into the game. Here comes the easiest part of this whole tutorial, making your account. You just click on login. And if you log in immediately, like connecting, it's gonna be like that. Uh, if you do it immediately, if you connect immediately, then that means you did it correctly so far. I just have to make a new account. Let's just let's say I'm from Slovakia. Okay. Let's accept the terms. Make a password. Make myself at least 18 years old. Else the game won't leave me. And I suggest you do the same. Let's just do it. Enter soldier name. We'll just do MDD test. Okay, let's log in, updating my stats, and if you actually get failed to connect to EA Engine on this part, I'm sorry but your ports are not forwarded, and you need to do that. Let's just refresh the servers, here we go, Mizu's, Mizu's test, it's on Harvest Day Conquest. I'm in fact gonna flip over to the other remote desktop connection to show you that the server is in fact running. I'm actually gonna connect to it first. Yes, put me in a squad. Come on, game, I'm getting a bit impatient here. Oh, and you can also see uh, it's ranked. Hung Buster is off, like the settings we made. Alright, we're going in game. You can see we have all the spec acts, and we also have the M1 because we enabled our veteran status. We also have the premium. I believe premium is, uh, it was like a deluxe edition, so you have these bonus weapons as well. The Tracer, the M19, these perks over here, and that's pretty much about it. Alright, we're in game, we're on our own server. Uh, you can also see my veteran status is 1, this is why I have the M1 Garand. And then, yeah, happy gaming, let's go back to the desktop. Okay, back at last. Um, I would like to actually mention one more thing before we head out the outro. You can also use Tungo for this method. Um, I'm even going to show you how. So first up, we got to start up Tungo. It's going to initialize and search in the meantime. Let's go check on our server. Again, I'm going to blur this part here so you don't see what it is. Going into the server. And here we are. Now then, let's see if we can actually find what we're looking for. Just a second, the views of the screen went black. For no reason. Okay, we're back. Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, you can see in this log here, I don't know if you can actually see it. Uh, the server is lagging a bit right now, but over here you can see the client. Uh, first of all, it's actually the server, the server connected on two ports. Then the client connected and disconnected. This was just me testing out before going in. Then we connected and disconnected again. Then we connected to the server and then we disconnected from the server. Uh, I, I do believe you should be in here somewhere, I think. So we should see our name right here somewhere, but I'm not really picking it. Oh well, we were in game. At least that was so. Levels is BC1 Harvest Day. So 
there's your proof, I guess. Up oh, there you go, we close the server, the server is also disconnected, and then we close the maze. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now then, let's go back to the other desktop. Okay, it would appear that this one is still logging. Uh, there's a new version. No, we don't need it right now. We don't need to make this video any longer than it needs to be. Although I'm pretty much sure with all my proof showcases, this video is already longer than it needs to be. We go, we're connecting to the adapter. Uh, if you don't know what Tungo is, it's basically a giant Garena, aka pretty much LAN only application, but it's also used for other stuff. If you go in here and you look it up, in fact, it's, I, um, I would like to say go check out Money in Effects channel. I'll leave it in the description. They make awesome stories on Tungo games. But let's just look up Bad Company 2. And as you can see, there's only four people right now, but. Um, yeah, who knows? Maybe if you get along with your friends or something and they don't get your external IP, like your ports aren't forwarded. Tungo could actually fix that for you. They have an option over here for forwarding ports and using UPnP instead of going into your router settings or whatnot and doing it. You can actually do it from here. Now, um, also, if you go to the Don't Panic section, you actually see there's a tutorial on it. Now, there's not there's not many tutorials on how to play the Maze Simulator. There's actually just one by Trevor. I have to say I looked into it because I, I hate to repeat stuff other people have already done and this is not really a tutorial, it's just him showcasing the server running and the client. Um, I got most of my content from this over here, like what am I supposed to do and such, but it's pretty much uh, it's the exact same thing as in the Mace README. So if you want to host in Tungo, all you have to do is right click on yourself and then you can see the IP that you have, give it to your friends and then, they ha then you all have to use Tungo sadly. So I'd recommend you do this normal method. I also hope you like the Nexus EA whatever switcher uh, from Robin Code. I also hope you like the Nexus May switcher, me and Robin did. And I hope you all like this video. If you do, show your appreciation, leave a like or something. If you would like to get the code for the Nexus May switcher, I will leave it in the description if I get enough requests for it. And then again, if you're having any problems, much like with my past tutorials, just leave a comment down there. I'll try to assist you with my best, even though I'm not really the architectural genius of this project here. So I can't really tell you something that I don't really understand. I'll try to help you as much as I can, that much I can promise. So um, once again, thanks for watching this video. Have any more questions? Leave in the comments. If you like this video, like it here. If you have friends who want to play with you LAN only, not on Nexus, then share this video with them. It's probably the only story on Mace on YouTube right now. Or if it isn't, well, it's probably the best written out and explained one. So I hope you like this video and 